Okay, okay. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that it is good. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today's event is hosted by us, Metastock, and the speaker will be one Price Healy from BigTrends.com. Uh, I have the pleasure of meeting Price on several occasions and, of course, listening to him teach on many occasions. I should say I've had the pleasure of meeting him several occasions, not many, <laughs> but I've listened to him teach many times. And I have to say, uh, Price is a very intelligent and chill guy, and I think you're going to very much enjoy whatever he has to say this evening. Uh, hosting the event today will be Jeff Gibby in Salt Lake City. I am right now in the control center in our satellite studio in Texas. I don't know where Price City, <laughs> Price Healy is going to be. I think he's in, I want to say Kentucky, but I'm not honestly sure. Anyway, we are Metastock. Uh, if you haven't heard of us before, uh, I'm going to play a little video here and you can learn all about us for just about three minutes. Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting, which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy to follow commentary window. Metastock has built-in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators, and the ability to build their own systems. And if you're a day trader, you can't do better than Zenith, the real-time news, data, and analysis package offered by Refinitiv a world leader in market data. Add on the world-class support, and it's not hard to see why Metastock has won the Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award for 26 consecutive years. To find out more about Metastock and how it can help your trading, visit metastock.com or contact a product professional via phone, email, or chat. Okay, thanks for watching that. Wow, I made that in my basement during the pandemic, which seems so long ago. 
but I swear it seems like the world's just been on fire, literally and figuratively, say that fast, ever since. Um, I sure hope that's not the case wherever you are. Hope things are going well. Again, my name is Greg Lewis. I'm the marketing manager for Metastock. We will be starting our main presentation here with Price Headley and Jeff Gibby in about four minutes and 22 seconds. Before that, I'd like to uh, let you know about a few things. We do have coming up our uh, quarterly traders conference. I'll show it right here. Uh, you can see that there are multiple days starting November 6th, going all the way through November uh, 11th. And on each of those days, as you can see, there are several speakers. I believe we have, well, there's 40 plus speakers. Uh, when I counted, I think I saw 43. So that's a lot of speakers and a lot of uh, marathon quality time to be spending with professional traders. And the best news is it's absolutely free. So there's no reason for you not to go to metastock.com slash traders dash conference and register to go to this event. I will put that information in the link here shortly. Uh, metastock.com slash traders dash conference. And uh, what else I was gonna tell you? Oh, uh, we would sure appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, oh, you know, only if you like it, don't subscribe to it and ring that bell if you don't like it. But if you do like it, subscribe and ring that bell so you'll be notified of when we have live events, which we do about once or twice a week typically. And uh, also during the event this evening, make sure you chat in anything you want. Uh, as a matter of fact, as, as soon as you come online, why don't you just say hello and let us know where you're coming from. Uh, we try to keep it fairly casual in here and we do appreciate all your comments. Uh, we just ask that we be respectful. And um, I think that's about it. We got about two minutes. It looks like Price is there. It looks like Jeff is there. It looks like we're ready to go. Again, just because I like hitting this button right here, go ahead and like and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to register for the upcoming Traders Conference, multi-day, six-day event, 43 speakers at metastock.com slash traders dash conference. Okay, for the next few minutes, I'm just gonna let you listen to music for a second while I check and make sure everything is uh, copacetic in Salt Lake City. Okay, I just spoke with the fellas over in GoToWebinar and they are raring to go. So <laughs> uh, in 44 seconds, we'll get started. Thank you again.
All right. Hey, thanks everybody. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate that. Hello, Satish. As you guys come in, if you're coming in through YouTube or if you're coming in through uh, GoToWebinar, make sure to say hi. If you have questions, we'll be monitoring the questions. We're happy to answer them. My name is Jeff Gibby. I'm going to cut. I have one announcement I'm going to talk as we get it started, and then um, I'm going to read a legal disclaimer, and then I'm going to get out of the way for a minute. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about today is we just announced it, um, uh, and uh, in just a few weeks here, I'm going to kind of come up here just a little bit, we're going to do a big, huge conference, and you see somebody really handsome right here, Price Eadley is going to be talking. <laughs> This is a six day event. We've got 43 hours of tips, strategies, and it's absolutely free. And uh, uh, we're gonna run all week, Monday through Saturday, 43 hours. You're welcome to join, it's free. Metastock.com slash traders dash conference. I'll include that link. And so, um, uh, and Greg is gonna paste it as well, but make sure you join. I know you're probably not gonna go to 43 hours in a row, I am. But if you want, uh, just for registering, you'll get free access to all of the recordings as well. And those are on no expiration. You can watch them at your convenience. Really, a really a great opportunity. And uh, so I'll type in that. Hello, Mike. Good to see you. Thanks for coming today. Uh, I'll type that in uh, to the link after we get our price started. In any case, I promised a legal disclaimer. Let's do it. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock, the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading, and Metastock should have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So uh, Price and I go back. <laughs> Let's go ahead. I'm going to talk a little bit about Price. Price, I know it's been at least 20 years probably. Well, I think maybe like 15. I'd uh, say 20. I'd say 20, Jeff, from about the time yeah. soon after we launched Big Trends. Yeah. Um, uh, I, Price is great. I really kind of like his attitude, the mentality he goes with. Uh, he's got a book. It's called Big Trends in Stocks and Options, right, Price? Big trends in trading, but you got the right idea. That's right. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Um, and he, uh, uh, um, one of the things, uh, do you still do Timer Digest? Uh, back in the day. In the day I did it, but it's, uh, it's just, with, yeah. we've been so busy, I haven't been doing it as much lately. But yeah, they're a great group. Yeah, uh, Timer Digest of the year many, many times. Um, really good in terms of kind of the mentality that he uses and kind of the things that he used. Uh, a couple of things I really like about him. He's very straightforward. Can always uh, I can un always understand what he's talking about. I, and he, yeah, I just love the way he talks. So uh, I think he's a great coach. Price, let's go ahead and get you started. I'm going to go ahead and turn Thank the you, uh, or at least turn the camera on for you, or not the camera, but the sharing. Yes. So, let me go ahead and go here. I just have to do this. You're going to. No so I'll, all it's going to do is going to say, "Do you want to present?" So there, there we go. go. That should have popped okay. up. It did. Let me go ahead and. Uh... Pop up my presentation here. There we go. Show my screen and clean. Show, let me know if you can see that okay. Uh, looks good. Uh, ready to go. Cool. Well, thank you for having me, Jeff. And good afternoon or evening, however it is to everybody, wherever you're logging in from. It's great to have you all with us. And I was telling Jeff, I said, you know, really my ideal is to give you some overview on some of the things that I like to look for in big trends methods within the Metastock platform and primarily using our big trends toolkit for Metastock, which uh, we'll talk more about later, but show you some overview on that. And then we'll go, uh, Jeff is so kind as to, he's got the latest version of Metastock, of course, on his end. So I was asked him if he would walk through uh, as we talk about a little bit more current market stuff. So we'll get into that here in a few, but let, you know, of course, quick reminder, everything I'm sharing with you is for education and informational purposes only. Uh, nothing we talk about here should be considered a specific recommendation of buyer selling any particular investment. Of course, you know, you are solely responsible for your own investment decisions, big trends, and as staff not responsible for any trades you choose to make. Not all big trends products and services are appropriate for all investors. We don't provide any personalized financial tax or legal advice of big trends. So consult your tax advisor before you make any investment that impacts your unique situation. What's your biggest challenge in the markets? Uh, let me ask, for me, it's information overload. Maybe we can get you interactive here and Jeff share with me that I can actually see the questions. Type in what's your biggest challenge these days 
in today's markets. You know, we've had a lot of growth in things like zero days to expiration options, which is to me creating a lot more intraday volatility as well. So you may see that if you're an intraday trader, you might see the noise level is going up. Use your chat box to type in what's your biggest challenge. I'm curious if anybody has any feedback for me, but for me, it's information overload. Um, because Why? Because there's, there's more data piping through to us all of the time, right? So for me, it's like, okay, if you're going to get yourself in a situation where you're trying to follow hundreds of different stocks, you're trying to follow loads of different time frames. You're looking at intraday plus end of day plus, plus, plus. Your brain starts to get waterlogged, right? And so for me, you've got to have a way to narrow your focus back down. And so the scanning capabilities, you know, Metastock, they call it the Explorer tool and to scan for the best of the best. And Mike says, yes, on noise. Thanks, Mike, for the feedback. I, I mean, the noise, the the overload, is it's palpable, right? It's like it creates tension. It creates overwhelm. And what it really creates, in my opinion, is it creates indecision. It creates a situation in which then you're you're seeing all these different things from all these different, some look bullish, some look bearish. What do I do now? Uh, if the more of those uh, things that you uh, uh, have coming in at you, you need something to simplify it back down so you've got clear buy and sell arrows when you should be in, when you should be out. And that's another great thing about the Metastock toolkit is that, you know, you can see I'm, I've got a load of different uh, big trends toolkit, this BTTK section, where you see that we've got everything from, you know, the um, the, the percent R Larry Williams percent range indicator, something I've used a lot. I've used my acceleration bands a lot. Um, we've, we've talked about like the percentage above a uh, key moving average, like the 200 day. We'll talk a little bit about that as well today. Just like there's a lot of different ways you can filter thousands of potential trading opportunities down to literally a few, a handful or, you know, in the top two or three even, but the idea being, okay, let's really simplify things down. So this toolkit uh, is is loaded with all kinds of different things. But what I always encourage you to do is start small. So we're going to start tonight with percent R, the Larry Williams uh, indicator called percent range. But I use it in a very different way than Larry does. I know Larry, he's one of the true trading legends and innovators in the trading game. You know, percent R is very similar to say a stochastic because it's designed to measure overbought and oversold levels. And in fact, percent R does it in a way that's... Um, not so smoothed out as a stochastic, it's, it's actually faster, uh, less smoothing. But I do something very different here, which is that, you know what, most people think when you hear the word overbought, most people think that overbought is bad. So if we go in a zero to 100% scale, which is what I prefer, Larry uses like a zero to minus 100 being the lowest reading. Uh, we may even show you one of those here to start off just so you can get a feel for that. But I'm looking for the top 20% of reading. So I want A plus stocks when I'm buying. And I want stocks here in the bottom 20% of readings when I'm when I'm considering getting bearish. So when they go oversold, keep dropping below that 20 percentile level, they keep following through with a close below that key extreme, close below the low for a bear trade, close above the high for a bull trade, then you can really see an opportunity to get some major moves. So this actually does show the original Williams scale, zero to minus 100. But just whichever scale you use, just remember top 20% for your bullish setups, bottom 20% for your bearish. And, and stick with me because you'll see how powerful it can be. This is a prior example on MasterCard, MA is the symbol. And what I, what I noticed is that when something goes overbought, according to the, the Williams percent R, and you can use a variety of different time parameters you want. I'll give you what I'm using. I'm using a 30 bar percent R setting. That's different than most defaults. A lot of defaults are nine or 14 bars. I like 30 bars because it gives me a lot smoother read. This is on a daily chart. So what you're seeing happening is when this stock gapped up back here in early May on this chart on the bottom left, that gap up is not where I buy. I watch, I mark that bar as high and I say, show me if it's going to close above that first bar as high in a future bar. This one followed through the very next day and closed on up a couple points higher up above 130. That's what I call bull confirmed status right there. Now, every time percent R comes back under that overbought threshold, in this case for the original Williams readings, it would be the minus 20 threshold on a positive scale, zero to 100%, that would be a plus 80. 
because 100 is as high as it can go on a positive scale. But regardless of what scale you use, this pullback here, that was on the 14th on this bar, May 14th, this low is the key low to watch. If it closes under that low, it ends the uptrend in my work. If it hangs in there, even if it trades below it on future bars, but it doesn't close below there, this one had a couple of those test points. I call it a bend, but don't break like a defense that bends, but doesn't give up any points. Might give up some yards on a defense, but it never gives up points. That's a defense that's in control, right? This is a, a bullish uh, retest that's the bulls are still in control here. So the bulls are holding up and, and then it makes its another leg up here into late May. And then it slams down. I remember real well back in this period where it slammed down right there. And I told my subscribers, you want to buy into the teeth of that retest here, that pullback low, which is back here on this big red candle. You know, and so a lot of you that follow candles, Jeff mentioned we have a lot of the folks in from Candlestick Forum and it's a fantastic group and community. Um, and bottom line is that, you know, you know, the candles, you can really get all jacked up about a major reversal pattern. But in my work, one candle does not make a trend, right? If you get a hard flush here, the question is, do we close underneath it or not? And you see it traded below at the next bar here briefly, but then it flips back up, closes back above that key low of that big red candle there early June. And that's a successful bull retest as well because we're not breaking that low point down here, okay? So that low point holds off to the race as we go. I bought calls right into the teeth of that. And boy, it was a fun one that was a triple digit winner. Like I try to sell half. If you're an options trader, quick lesson. If you buy an option, call or put, if you can double it, sell half of your contract, sell half of your position, get your risk capital back in your pocket. We sold half out of the double in this one. And I recall it went on to a triple plus on the rest. So first rule of thumb, get your risk capital back at a double on half. That's a good core. Whether you buy stocks for the long term and do that as well, I do that. If I can double any investment, I like to sell half and get my money back. I don't care about paying taxes on gains because I'm looking to make money in the market. I don't want to have losses that I have to carry forward. I want to be able to book gains pay a little bit of tax and say, I'm glad to pay taxes. I've got profits, right? So the idea is that that's my philosophy. Of course, if you do this in a retirement account, you don't have to pay tax. Um, that's another great strategy where a lot of option trades, uh, a lot of brokers will allow you to do options in a retirement account. Some won't, so you got to check with the broker. So that's another thing to keep in mind. We're not here to really focus on that, but just know that's going to happen. Now, here's a great example where, okay, you get another retest. This one holds, but it's slow to bounce. And we get a, a fourth retest right here off of this little pullback percent R underneath that overbought threshold. That low does not hold. The next day it closes below it. And there's our red exit arrow. That's not a bearish signal, mind you. It's just a bullish exit. There's a big difference, right? The bearish signal would come if we break down the bottom 20% of readings and then we follow through, which this one did not. It bounced back up here. So this low was not taken out. We'll show you bear examples here too. But... What I want to talk about in the same context is that Jeff and the amazing team at Metastock, all, all of his crew there, they're so committed to doing the right thing by traders, getting the best tools out in your hands. Help me, Jeff helped me to do another iteration of our toolkit where I said, look, that overbought threshold, that top 20% of readings, here's a prior example on Apple where I was saying, look, I want to be able to visualize when it's in the top 20%. And so that, that top 20% of readings is shown by this upper royal blue line here. I call this big trends bands. It's basically a visual representation of when you're overbought on the, on the Williams percent are in the top 20% of readings. Do you notice something happening here? When it's outside of that upper boundary, real bullish historically. It doesn't guarantee anything, mind you. When it's outside there, sure, and it comes back inside there, that's a retest. That low must hold. You see it starts to rally, then it actually violates it on this pullback because I never want to see it undercut a prior low. The mid-May low got taken out uh, mid-June, and that's now saying you're done with the bullish case now for a while. But what's also cool is that Jeff helped me to create what I call big trend score. And I'm going to uh, have Jeff come in and tell you more about it later. But the idea of big trend score is that all those big trends toolkit um, indicators that I showed you earlier, we took the core ones that I use and we said, let's start to create some weighting of a variety of those big trends indicators into what's called big trend score. When it hits into the top percentiles of the big trend score, you see how this thing goes green here back in February and early March on this chart on the left. That's one of your most powerful bullish phases of that trend. Guess what? 
when you see that thing go green in mid-May, didn't last very long, about a week, week and a half. And then again, briefly there in August, that one did not last hardly at all comparatively. That's where you should be particularly bullish. That's where you should, in my experience, obviously there's no guarantees, right? So you never want to go load the boat from a money management standpoint. But I'm saying like, if you're thinking about, should I buy calls? Should I do credit spread? Should I do debit spread? Should I do um, more conservative, like cover calls? To me, the times where you don't want to be doing cover calls, where you want to be more aggressive is when we're getting that strong green verticality February, March, or mid, mid-May, mid and briefly in August, that you give it a chance to really catch the speed of movement phases. And there's other phases here where the stock is going up, like late August, early September on this chart. This was not this year, but a prior year. But the idea is that principles are still the same. We'll look at current market charts here in a little bit, thanks to Jeff. But the idea is that, look, we want to make sure that we're catching these opportunities when they're presenting themselves and leveraging them intelligently. The big trend score gives you a way to now say, it's not just one indicator anymore, folks. It's that that percent R is just a starting tool. And so here's what it actually looks like. You see it up here, the big trend score plotted out. So you can see when it's getting up above its 80 percentile plus, and, and you see 80% in my work comes up a lot. Why? It kind of goes back to that classic um, economic principle that we know is Pareto's principle, or some people would call it the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule, of course, implies that 20% of what you do is going to generate 80% of your results. I'm not just talking about trading. I'm talking about business, your customers, 20% of your customers generate 80% of your business or profits. You know, the same uh, Pareto noticed many centuries ago that why do 20% of the people control 80% of the wealth? And we've seen it go even more dramatically where you hear about the top 1% because then it's like it keeps on being like a multiplier where the, the people who are controlling that continue to control that wealth, right? And so it's like, okay, yeah, we want to be in that top, that top percent where we're really helping ourselves to have a unique perspective about why we have a, a opportunity to do something unusual here, right? I don't want to trade all this chop back and forth. All that chop back and forth is way too slow for options buying. You know, if you have other option strategies, you like to sell premium, sure, you can make some money in, the, in between those bands. But the big opportunity in this whole chart here, this is an older one, obviously, but yeah, and we'll show some current ones in a minute, is the day after the 9th here on the 10th, there's your launch point. And you see how vertical Apple went, where here it was back about 123. Mm -hmm. And in a matter of less than two weeks, stocks over 133. Right, a 10 point move that fast, almost a 10 percent move in the underlying stock. You're saying that's that's uh, going to give you the ability to create some dramatic leverage in options, and so that's the kind of window of opportunity we want to be in. What's what's interesting to me is that my old uh, big trends bands, which is the percent R retest theory, would say you wouldn't be exited until somewhere around early to mid March here. But when the bank, when the big trend score starts to lose it here, you see it's telling you to hop out a week to a week and a half earlier, right? The speed of movement phase is ending. So your goal should be, I want to catch that per parabolic acceleration phase in anything that I trade. You can see like this one over here, it was giving you a setup right here, but it wasn't really following through. So we didn't get that follow through in late April. We really only caught it in that mid uh, second part of February move there. So the idea is if you don't have speed, don't mess with options, especially not options buying, right? Focus yourself on being patient. The tools in Metastock and the, and the ability to scan and explore for those will really help you. Now, if we really back it out and look at a lot more data for historically, one of the things I love about this chart is that there were a lot of naysayers on Apple and big tech, big fang names. You know, there's still naysayers these days. But you go and look at this chart and say, for a bearish opportunity, it would have to be below this lower red line, the minus 80% line, right? The bottom 20% of potential readings. How many of those did Apple give you? Zero. So even before I talk about the good trades that you could have made, sometimes the best part of the ability to be in the game for the long haul, I've been trading myself for 34 years now on stocks and options. Part of the secret of longevity is first knowing when not to trade. What trade should you not be taking here? Anything related to buying puts. Even when you see what looks like breakdowns below this lower boundary here, even if they're looking like, hey, this thing's falling through to the downside. Well, our big trend score never gets negative enough. It's slightly negative, but it's not negative enough. 
So you're looking for this exceptional strength or exceptional weakness as where you want to focus your capital so you can start opening yourself up to truly big moves, especially in relatively shorter time frames, right? The faster you get a move in the shorter time frame, and, and I'm not talking about on an intraday chart, although you could apply this for day trades as well, but I'm really talking about kind of like even on a swing trading type of a perspective here and saying, okay, even if you catch this kickoff here in early December, doesn't look like it did a whole lot by the end of the move, but if you can get that first leg up, if you can get a chance to double half your position, sell half out of the double, create the proverbial free trade, that's a great spot to be in. Some of these give you that chance. Some of them don't. Like this one here, you see it's going to be a loser. It's buying and then it's getting flipped two days later and you're going to lose money on that trade. That's just part of trading. So I would, I would say as an options buyer, I don't like to lose more than 50%. So for me, if I'm targeting doubles, losing 50% is still acceptable. Um, obviously, I'm not doing that on a huge percent of capital in any one trade, right? Be very conservative. Take tiny little bits into each position you take. Don't ever load the bone. Don't go. All, it's, it's not like holding poker. It's not. There's no room for an all-in moment in trading. If you go all in, you will eventually get busted, right? You don't. You want. You don't want that to happen. You take that off the table. We're talking about taking very small risk in any one trade as a percentage of your whole portfolio. But when you do catch some of these runaways, you see there's a runaway in November. Look at that beautiful green big trend score. I love how they've met a stock. Jeff, thank you for color coding that so beautifully. So you can see go green here late October and bam. And by the way, let me. Uh, we're going to talk more about the market here, but there's a lot of negativity popping up about the market right now. It's late October. Guess what? Seasonality says that the market's getting ready to bottom and should be headed for a pretty positive phase, not just over the next six months, which is usually the end of October to end of April phase is usually where the market makes 90% of its gains, but especially over these next couple of months into the end of the year, based on pre-election year um, cycle work and, and past late October, late October bottoms that have led to pretty dramatic reversals to the upside. So don't get too negative from a seasonal perspective right here. I think we're right near the end of that seasonality. We're going to talk more charts today, but I'm just, it's just a broader reminder that timing is everything, right? It's, it's, it's something where the charts help us with timing, but if you're getting a lot of bearish charts and then we're headed right into a major seasonal low, make sure you don't get too bearish right at that low point. That, always good to keep that bigger picture in mind. So, like I mentioned, what is the breakdown of the big trend score components here? We've got percentages where we use, we put a little extra weight on percent R, Larry Williams indicator I like a lot. So we actually had that in there twice, uh, current and a two day reading both. We have the commodity channel index, which actually I use on a lot of big name growth stocks. Efficiency ratio, which I saw the guy, uh, another great trading, trading innovator, Perry Kaufman talk. At, a, at a, one of these trading conferences decades ago, and he was talking about trend efficiency. And I thought, that's a really good concept. How can we code it into seeing where you're getting really clean price movement in your favor? Um, and then efficient price movement. And then acceleration bands is a tool I developed, kind of built off of John Bollinger's Bollinger Bands, but actually now not just looking at volatility of price action, but looking at trend to look at the acceleration bands. ADX, Wells Wilder's average directional movement, gives you a trend component in there as well with the directional movement lines that Wilder created. And then the moving averages and then a little bit more directional movement weighting there. So you start weighting all those things together and you start getting scores of saying, okay, look on this chart. There are eight um, bulls and two neutrals, right? So guess what kind of reading you're going to get? You're probably going to get a reading pushing around that 80% level. And there it is, big trend score of 80 as it shows on that chart. And you can see, hey, you're getting 80 plus. You see the trend is pretty good on Apple through that August phase there until it loses it there about August 21st. And now you're saying, okay, momentum is lost. Let's move on. So that's the great thing is that you can go take for any given stock, any given time frame, both current and past, it'll show you where the score was at. And you can say, hey, when this happens, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing for that stock? Then you start to look at uh, the, uh, some prior names like Facebook, of course, now called Meta, but you see there's a lot of chop on the meta chart back here on the right side of the chart. And you see, where's our green big trend uh, score? It's basically saying the only phase you should have considered is from about this July 20th window 
to about the end of July. And you can see how quickly it went from 163 up here to about 175, 176 in literally about six or seven trading days. And so, you know, one brief little period here in and right back out, not much damage done there, but basically saying, okay, that'd be a little bit of a loss on that second one, right? So no, not every time is it going to work, you know? Um, and, and you can see here, the big trends bands are looking good on the right. We've got a buy arrow from a big trends bands perspective, but guess what? Is there any green down here? Uh-uh, not a strong signal, saves you a fake out, right? We're trying to trade the true breakouts and leave as many of the fake outs behind as possible. So you see another phase for Facebook and you can see, again, we didn't catch this one early from the standpoint of, hey, it was already starting to move out outside these big trends bands here, but it's saying, look, it's safer to make the bet and then get the confirmation here as of the second bar in on the 27th. And then look where it goes. It goes from about 147 and a half. And in a matter of three more sessions, it's up to about 153 and a half. You get a quick six points. That's going to be good for some options uh, juice there in whatever option call option you might buy. Um, so th that's the idea. Whether you're more conservative buying an in the money option, that's usually how I recommend people start out. I get Facebook's trading in this example, 147 and a half. I'm not saying to go buy the 150s. In this example, you'd probably make more money buying the out of the monies. But I'm saying start small, uh, 147 and a half, maybe consider something like a 145 call. Get get some time under your belt. I'm, I mean, some intrinsic value under your belt. So it's not just all time you're paying. Get, get some of the time out of your trade. You'll find you're probably a happier and more stable options trader as a result, especially if you're just getting into options. So so the philosophy here, here's an, a prior one with Alibaba, right? Alibaba now, of course, has been talked down as like, you know, all the China government uh, challenges that a lot of the big name Chinese stocks have faced. But you can see in a prior time, the, the wind was at their back, right? As you can see, we're getting some really nice little quick surges here. And the key is that, you know, as you see those surges happening, all, you, all it takes is just a little bit of a, a thrust in your favor to get that first chance to double an option. And then after that, if you don't think about this, if you double the first half on this move here on the right side of the chart, say you can double that on that quick little burst up. If that happens and then you say, what if the other half goes back to to nothing. What if what if I get completely creamed on it? Well, if you've sold half out of the double, the other side goes to zero, you basically have guaranteed yourself a break even on the trade, right? We would typically say another good rule of thumb for options traders is once you double something, raise a stop on the rest of your position to break even. So think about it now. If you say, okay, well, I double the first half. Now, if it trades back to break even, then get out. So half a double, half a break even, you just made 50% on that trade. So that's a good rule of thumb too, is that, yeah, you want to come up with some trailing stop discipline. You don't want to be too tight because you'll whipsaw yourself out of some really nice moves, but you don't want to give it too much wiggle room either. So we find that when you're going for doubles, move your stop up to break even, and then you basically have guaranteed yourself, unless it's like an earnings gap situation, you've guaranteed yourself a nice trade. Let's talk downside. What's interesting about this is this is actually an older chart. This is not the TLT 20 plus year treasury bond now, though it looks very similar to this. But this is actually around the time of Trump's election, late 2016. And look at how the, this is the most interesting part to me is look at where it's rare to get this kind of a massive downside surge. And you can see the biggest part of that surge was happening there right after the Trump shocking victory. Whatever you think about it, you can see the bond market didn't like it. And so the bottom line is that there was that huge, sharp sell-off. It was already dropping, right? I mean, our, our big trends bands obviously picked up more of the move in this case. But you're, you're looking for that speed of movement saying, man, it's just an absolute free fall collapse, institutional panic out of these bonds. And, of course, that was leading to an interest rate spike at the time. Ultimately, nothing like what we've seen in the last few years. But the idea is that you can see that was the real sweet spot on the downside. And the Metastock toolkit showed the big trend score was red and that, yes, it was a great bearish opportunity post-Trump election. Um, I'm sure we'll see it in the current one now, too. But you see, there were comeback phases. There were some brief little trading opportunities to the upside. They didn't last very long on the upside, but you can see that the real sweet spot is shown there by that bond market surge and then that bond market tank. And then here's a gold one. You can see um, this is showing you first move here in gold, you're going, that one didn't work so well. Okay, that's going to happen sometimes. So we're getting our signal in here. 
Gold's trading about 120 on the GLD. It drops a little bit intraday there. You're not going to get your double. You, you, you basically end up saying, okay, it ends back up here. You're going to lose a little bit of money on that trade. This is why I tend to advocate in the money options, right? Because if you buy at the money or out of the money, that week or two of time loss is going to hurt more. And so what I say is, okay, you know what? You buy the 120s, say you buy one, or, or it's at 120, you buy the 125 puts like well in the money. It goes up to 121, even 122. You still got a healthy amount of premium left that you can salvage and not take a big hit um, and still be around for the next move that's coming here. You see when this thing starts breaking down again, you see there it is 117 on the way to 107. That's a huge move in GLD over about, you can see it took about five weeks for that move to play out. So another rule of thumb when you're using daily charts is I'm not recommending weekly options. I'm not recommending zero DTE options, right? Zero days expiration has become all the rage. I'm saying go ahead and don't worry about that. Buy about a month out of time at least, right? Third Friday in December, that would get you out here or somewhere near the lows as it turned out. Um, but you can see that you're playing the game to ride a trend for potentially weeks if the trend is working on a daily chart. If you want to be a just a purely swing trader, you're probably looking at a 60 minute chart. You can change your time frame. use these same principles, right? Here was a gold um, move on the upside. You can see it was starting to really pour it on there, that late August signal. And, and it was about a five point move up in GLD into early September. You know, that's the key is that you're, you're hoping you can catch that double on the first half and then, and then sell half and then basically move that stop up to break even on the rest. That's the goal. And if not, like I said, this one here on the left didn't work. Stop out, probably taking a 40%, maybe even 50% loss. That can happen. So just know that's possible and know that's gotta be your secret. This is one that really was surprising to me. It was General Motors on the upside. You can see GM, here's this, you'll see this a lot where long base building, long sideways, it finally gets going. There's our percent R confirmation. There's our first percent our retest but you can see we wait until we get this and if you got in here and got right back out you take a little loss on that first move you say look at when this one really starts to go really confirms here officially here at about 38 bucks gm from 38 bucks that was happening um about september the 12th and you see it's on its way from 38 to about 44 in a period of about three weeks you know, so the beauty of that is that, again, speed of movement, you see the pouring on. It, the, let's face it, the markets are driven not by you and me as individuals. They are driven by in, institutions. Institutions are driving it. Institutions want the same things that you and I want. They want more of what's working, more if it's profiting, they want more of it. And if it's not working, they want out, right? They don't want to be in something that's headed the wrong direction. So that's why you see institutions more steadily pressing on the gas and keeping the pedal to the metal rather than just looking for a quick hitter. They're trying to build a more meaningful position on something that's really working. And that's why you see these trends that take many days and oftentimes weeks to play out because they're just pouring on the gas, pouring on the gas. Now, as I mentioned on an in the money option as a stock substitute, the principle of this is, okay, if, why, I never sell short any stock anymore if I can buy a put option instead. So the idea is that, look, you, instead of selling 100 XYZ shares, if I think XYZ is going to drop, it's 56.60. Then you got to put up some chunk of that amount of the value of the stock as margin. If you're a short seller, why do all that instead? What if we bought out, say, uh, say a month to the, in this example, it says December, say we're in mid-November. Mid -November, you know, right now I'd be probably looking, uh, we've been looking more at the uh, November options, but about, about, uh, a few weeks out till expiration right now, November 17th monthly uh, expiration date. But you look at this, say, okay, well, if it was December, fine. December 60 put. If you have a 60 put, the idea of a put is you've got a right to sell the stock is what a put gives you when you buy it. Right to sell it at what? At $60. That's called the strike price. That's already intrinsically worth 3.40, right? Sell it at 60. You could go in the open market buy it back in here at 56.6 and pocket that $3.40 difference. Now you wouldn't want to do that because the option is going to be trading for more than that intrinsic value of 340. That extra amount over and above that 340 is 130. So 130 out of your $470 to control hundred shares of stock, 130 of that 470 is what roughly 
maybe a third or 30%, it might even be 28% of that total premium is time risk, right? If nothing happens, the stock stays flat at 56.6, then actually you see that you're going to lose the time portion of the trade. This is why buying in the money is a, is a risk stabilizer, a de-risker compared to buying at or out of the money options where it's all time value, where there's no, if you bought a 55 put, it's not worth anything intrinsically until it gets under 55. So it's got to keep dropping, right? So we're just trying, saying, let's, let's not be so aggressive. Let's say, hey, if it goes down to 50, you got the right to sell at 60, it's worth now at 50 on each 100 shares, that's worth $1,000, right? So one of these option contracts is going to go from 470 to 10. And you see in this example, that's going to gain you 530 bucks or 112%, assuming no time values left when it goes deep into money like that before the mid-December expiration. And so you make 112% against your 470 bucks, or if you were just short the stock, you see you'd, you'd, from 56.60 down to 50, you'd make $660 or 11.7% on that higher amount of capital that the shares involve. So the principle of this is that yes, the, the options give you leverage. You just have to know when to use that leverage. We were talking about bear examples, and it's always helpful for me to kind of remind folks when you think back to the financial crisis, like some of the earliest warning signs of it were in the financial sector, like Bear Stearns, appropriately named, right? It wasn't Bull Stearns. It was Bear Stearns on its way to basically uh, getting bought out for a, a couple bucks, or they had to bump, JP Morgan tried to buy it out for two bucks a share and then had to bump their offer up towards 10 bucks a share, but still, from 160, that's still, you know, 95, 98% haircut, whatever, 90, 95% haircut at least. So you look at this and say, okay, you know, what were we seeing here is not just the breakdown in the percent R. And by the way, there were multiple times where percent R started to go versus sold in that bottom 20% of readings, but it wouldn't close under that low. Tries to break down, doesn't close below it. So the close is very important to me. It tries, and then it bounces back up tries, bounces back up. We had like four fake outs here. Tries, bounces back up. Four fake outs before the fifth one that finally breaks down. Sets up, doesn't bounce, keeps on dropping. Now you're bear confirmed here near 130. So you look at that and you say, okay, well, 130, why do I have an arrow into this uh, bounce back in the percent R? Because that's the retest point here. As it broke that first leg down, if you miss the train leaving the station, your best spot to get back on the wagon is on a retest. That first retest was pretty golden because you can see it tests back above that oversold threshold. I used to get worried about that when I first started trading this method. And I would say, hey, I'm saying it should stay oversold. Uh, if it's not, I better get out. Well, you know what? Percent R is much more jagged, much more responsive than, say, a typical stochastic. So those, those little bounces are oftentimes kind of critical retest points that will hold that high on a closing basis. It opens up the next morning, then it gets hammered down, hammered down for several days from 130. It's already already down here at about 101 in a matter of about five more sessions. So you say, okay, that's where you see opportunity. Then it bounces. We're getting another bear retest up here. And you see that bear retest at 115 is violated. The next bar up here at about 117. And you're lose if you put on a trade there, you're losing a couple bucks the next day. I'm okay with that. Would you risk losing two, three, four, five dollars in the underlying if you could make thirty dollars? You know, that's how you have to think: is what's my risk compared to what's my reward? The big thing that I say is that if it breaks and if it's no longer a valid pattern, the big thing is that you must get out. You cannot hold and hope. You cannot tell yourself, oh, it'll it'll eventually, this thing's a disaster in the making. I'm going to hold on and bet that it keeps going. There's the rest of the Bear Stern chart where you can see, you know, a couple of these nice percent R moves on the downside. You see the one that really developed there in March of 08, breaking down. There's the follow through on the downside. There's a almost retest. We almost got a new reentry here, but we did not. We sold half of our Actually, I think I, I I made a mistake here. I sold my whole position at a double thinking I could get back in on a retest. That's a mistake to sell all of your position at a double because I like to keep that on there to remind myself. We all can make mistakes. You'd think, well, selling half or selling all your position at 100% gain doesn't sound like such a bad mistake, right? But when it goes on to from a from a 100% gain, it would have been more than a thousand percent gain when it gapped down here from 60 to 10, right? 
in a matter of a couple of days. It was that was a Friday when it went to thirty, and then the next morning it opened up at like three or four because they were JP Morgan was offering to buy it out for two dollars over the weekend. So just basically saying that its assets weren't worth much or if anything. So this shows you sell half at a double and then give yourself a chance to keep riding. On the concept of efficiency, I always remind people that when you're buying an option, the options market makers, of course, are pricing that option based on, is that a typical tech stock that has a lot of ups and down volatility? Or is it like I say, a utility stock or a grocery stock in black here that's just slowly chugging along uh, up or down. And you can see, where would you rather buy a call? If, if all you knew was that from the beginning point A to the ending point B, they're going to be at the same value. So they both start at 40 and say they both end at 50. And say so you can't predict every squiggle in between. If, if the market knows that this grocery stock in black is priced at say half the volatility of this red tech stock, buying a call on the lower volatility black steady name is going to give you a lot more return on your investment because you're going to pay, if it's half the volatility back here at starting point A, you're going to actually pay half of the total premium, say for an at the money call option, half uh, the call in black will cost you half as much if it's half the volatility because that's the main factor in the options pricing model that basically determines a lot of the premiums. And so if you pay half the volatility, but you get the same move by the end of this period, you're going to get twice the return on your investment in black compared to red. Now, some people tell me, oh, I can get in and out of red and I'll be perfect. And, and, and if anything, I say, well, that's optimistic. And more, more, moreover, red's more likely to whipsaw you. If you've got a trailing stop, it might take you out at these like little pullback, harsh pullback points before it bounces back. So I like that slow, steady, efficient trend in black that's not really using a lot of excess price movement. So the green indicator in the middle panel here, this is the efficiency ratio that I coded up from Perry Kaufman's work um, that really tested well for saying, hey, when something gets into a, an efficient zone above the plus 30 threshold here, look at how you get this big breakout. This was in silver. This is back a ways, but you can see silver went from like 30 bucks an ounce up to about the high 40s an ounce over a period of about two and a half months from like a mid February, late February breakout here to a early May top, less than three months. So you can see there was one retest right there where it pulled back and held that low. Actually, there's a couple other little retests. So the same retest theory applies. Those retests need to hold, they did. And then when this thing comes down right here, this low should have held and it didn't. So that's why it shows you a buy exit off of that $42 level would have been about the exit point officially in that trend. But of course, you're taking out profits gradually. Of course, as you can learn other more advanced options techniques like rolling up, you know, you take your profits out, say you bought a 30 strike call when we started out here at 32 or whatever, and then pops up here, you sell half of the double, you get a retest to buy maybe like a different strike. You can keep on rolling your, your take your profits out of your original position, roll it up to a higher strike price and effectively lower your risk while still participating in a trade. You can see there's another one over here that didn't do quite as well. It went up a little bit for a few weeks and then kind of gave it up. So, the, but the idea is that it needs to stay in that very efficient price action. What does efficiency essentially mean? It means you're making cons consistently higher highs. And when you pause, you're not giving a lot back. You might give it back for a day or two, but you're not getting this kind of volatile move where you're seeing the efficiency really drop off here. You're getting this kind of slow and steady wins a race trend to the upside. That's our objective. And then the other thing, we talk about the percentage above the 200 day. This is an interesting one to me because um, there was a time where I was, you know, I was going up to New York a lot to do uh, interviews with Fox News and sharing with them different things. And, and I came up to them, they're, they're like, tell us the stock that you think will double in the next three months. And I recommended TBSI, TBS International, which was a shipping stock, like dry ships. And Metastock showed me, the reason I picked them up is because Metastock showed me that DRYS and TBSI were new buys there. This is going back a ways. Um, but the idea is that I went on to Fox News and said, buy TBSI. All the other panelists said, it's way too extended. But the philosophy here is that if something gets this extended more than 100% above its 200-day moving average, you can get monster moves even bigger as as one of my mentors, Jim Bittman, told me that one of his mentors taught him, how does a stock go from one to 100? 
it has to go from one to 10 first. It has to prove it to you that it wants to move. And you can see that the Metastock uh, Big Trends Toolkit here did a great job of picking up these big buys. There's where I was talking about it, and it was making that great move from the mid-20s up to the upper 40s in a matter of a couple of months. I mean, from mid-June to early August, to mid-August. So you can see, then it went through a little choppy phase here, but then it started to launch yet again here on the right side of the chart. It's breaking outside of that 100% above the 200-day threshold. That sounds so ridiculously overbought, and yet I call it moving into orbit. It actually shows you that there's an opportunity to catch the next big leaders, right? So this is all part of the Big Trends Toolkit, the percent above the 200-day moving average. We also have a percent above a 400-day moving average if you're not getting any 200-day signals. Obviously, with the market being sloppy lately, you're going to get less of those signals. This is for kind of as the market starts to get, get some pretty good uptrends going. This will help me decide what's the lead, where are the leaders, the ones that are really moving up more than that 100% above their 200-day moving average. Those are the ones the institutions are usually pouring on the gas on. But we've got the percent R uh, tool. We've got the, um, of course, a lot of other tools I don't have time to talk about here today. Uh, but acceleration bands is one of the things I really cut my teeth on that allowed me to start bigtrends.com back in 99, catching the accelerations in the tech stocks and the internet stocks and some of the brokerage stocks in that era that were really running to the upside hard. So Toolkit does a great job of showing you that. Um, that's the end of my overall presentation, but I was going to see, Jeff, if maybe we could pull up the current um, uh, charts that you have on your end um, in Metastock 18, and maybe just do a few minutes of just even looking at the condition of the SPY, for example, the market as a whole, and see. Well, I was really interested in TLT. Um, yeah, can you see TLT. my chart? Because that's what you're talking yes, about, and I was yes, actually absolutely. pulling it up. I was kind of curious Thank about you. it. So. <laughs> yeah, I figured it would. It shows it pretty well, right? I mean, you yeah. see our folks are, are red. The the big trend score on, and where it was particularly bearish, um, you can see uh, that late September phase from the 25th on through here until October 9th. And boy, look at TLT dropping from about, it had just undercut all that support in the low 90s. It was there about an 89, you, know, you see 89.18, bam, down to under 85 in a matter of less than two weeks. And TLT never got crazily expensive on its options, despite the fact that you were getting dramatic price movement to the downside, right? So this is, again, where if you focus on in the money options, like when it was trading about 89, instead of buying the 89 puts, which would have made you money here too, because it was such a fast move, but if you're buying the 92 or 93 puts, giving yourself three or four points of intrinsic value, you don't end up playing that time game, that volatility game that the market makers tend to get a lot of people stuck with. You can see it caught also that mid-August move there from the 14th through about the 23rd real nicely from about 95 down to about 92 in a matter of about five days, right? So the key is speed of movement. You're getting that directional move in your favor. What does it say about bonds now? It says don't mess with it. Even though it's still technically in that percent R bear trend, right? We're testing up in that lower big trends band. I wouldn't buy it by any means, but the idea is that it's not got the speed of movement. It tried for a couple of days there and then started to reverse. And so you don't want to get stuck if it's trying to bottom or, or worse yet, just get stuck sideways. That's, that's the outcome of a lot of trades where people are betting on a reversal or betting on a continuation, but you lose that strength of the move. And then it just chops around and sideways is, you know, is death for option buyers. And some people would say, oh, well, I could go do credit spreads and sell premium. And yes, you could. But it's just so much easier, even with credit spread trading, to use these price trend moves, the big trends moves, in your favor as well. And so, you know, when you go in and look at, say, other popular stocks, like Jeff, maybe you might pull up just for a frame of reference, maybe like a Tesla, just to show people like, hey, there's a volatile one, TSLA, right? It trades a lot of options. But you can see it's only one window there this year that you should have been considering call options, right? It showed you from the end of May to about the latter part of June, right? That verticality of that window, whatever type of Tesla calls you're looking at, probably gonna be a pretty good spot to get a piece of that move and to get paid. Remember, it went from about 205 there uh, up to 207 mm -hmm. by the time it was confirmed up to about 280 in a period of about less than three weeks. So that's, that's gonna give you opportunity to take part of your profits 
like I said, take that double. Don't get greedy. There's that old Wall Street phrase, bulls and bears can get rich, but as you know, hogs get slaughtered, right? The idea is that if you sell half your position at a double, you have set up risk-free trades for yourself. If it keeps going, wonderful. If it gives it up, you're not sweating it. You're happy either way, right? That that's what I guess I, I like to I like to say. I, I call this. We've got black and white candles here, but I like to call it uh, shades of gray. That actually, instead of having it have to be all in or all out, if I take half off at a double, it actually makes me comfortable riding the rest of the trend and hoping it's going to go on. But if it doesn't, I'm not sweating it anymore if I've gotten my risk capital back. If you get your risk capital back in your pocket, it actually frees you up, not just financially, but psychologically to keep riding. What about NVIDIA, Jeff? Why don't we take a look at NVDA? Because that, of course, has been another one that's been on a lot of people's um, kind of radars with all the talk of artificial intelligence. And you can see earlier this year, I was starting to get the inklings of a good move developing Jan late January to early February. You can see that's that looks like nothing now in the chart. But when Jeff zooms that in, you'll see that that was a really substantial and clean move that was happening right there from about January 24th setting up and then getting that nice continuation there that confirmed really officially early February. But it still caught a, a, a nice little quick pop up from about 210 to about 230 over those next couple of weeks. And the key here is that, again, NVIDIA's options are not cheap, right? So you've got to be careful about saying, you know what, if it gets a buy exit there in the 16th, whether you're up or down, you probably haven't doubled those options because they're so pricey. But they say, okay, you're not going to get hurt there. And it's going to say, just hop out and wait for the next signal. So the idea is that, okay, you know, even when you don't get the big verticality of a Tesla last minute that we just saw, even where you're waiting for it to kind of develop and you say, okay, well, that one, not quite as great as we wanted, but it wasn't painful, right? That's part of it too, is knowing that you're stacking enough uh enough things on your side to say, yes, as we mentioned before, there's so many different indicators here that um, that we stack into one big trend score that really helps. And what about the SPY, Jeff? If we could look at the overall market, just to kind of For remind sure. people that, you know, I mean, the SPY is not going to give you as many of these massive runs, the upside or downside, but you can see, interestingly enough, the phase back there in June and July, right? We had a couple of windows to the upside where Got nice verticality there for that um, that middle of June phase there, right? That was a pretty strong move from 4:30 to about 4:45, and then you see that next phase, brief one there that didn't really follow through there in late June, start around July 4th. That one would have been a loss, and then you see made a slow trend there in the latter part of July. And then interestingly, if you go back over to where we are now, Jeff. Uh, this, we're right on the bubble here, right? We're, we're basically saying we've just now gotten a, that little red dot there. That first mm -hmm. bit of going red is telling you that if we close below this low here, today's low was 411.6 on the SPY. A close below that opens us up for a bearish phase on SPY. But if it doesn't, that's why we put that dot there. We call that a setup rather than a just chasing the first little sign of weakness here. If it tests that, but it quickly reverses, that can mark a low too. So it's really kind of a critical, kind of an inflection point, kind of a setup point of it could go get worse if we close under 411.60 in a future day. But if we open at 410 tomorrow and then we flip up and close back over that 411.60, then that's not going to be a bearish signal. It's the closes that really dictate if we're getting the follow through or not. So it's really, it's really useful to be able to take the toolkit take all the all the different indicators and kind of get it down into one kind of overall score that then you can say, okay, whatever stock, whatever market, whatever you want to look at, then you can really get that visual on it. So Jeff, I'll probably just stop there and kind of hand it over to you so you can kind of walk sure. people through how the how the big trends toolkit and the score works and then basically how folks can take advantage of of putting all these tools into their trading arsenal as well. Before we do that, I do have one question. Oh, well I do have one sure. question from uh, Lou Al. <laughs> and he wanted to know, uh, what do you think about the NASDAQ? Do you think it will go so lower from pop, here? You want to pop up the QQQ? Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. So, you know, interestingly, you see, even though it's broken pretty hard the last couple of days, it's not giving that kind of setup signal that the SPY is giving. And so, so it's not there yet. But I'm not saying that means that it couldn't get there. I'm just saying you wait until you get that. Obviously, there were some really nice phases on the upside, as Jeff's showing you back yeah. there. May yeah, that's really nice. Really nice yeah. verticality, right? We want that verticality. We want that speed of movement. 
um, you know, whether you're an option buyer, or whether you just like to trade the underlying ETF, I mean, you could use it obviously for that reason too. But, but of course, when you start constructing the option strategies around it, you see why options are popular for good speed of movement trends like that. And so I'm saying, yeah, Qs have been stronger than the other indexes. Let's uh, type in IWM just in comparison, Jeff. That's the Russell 2000 IWM. It's been weaker, right? So if I'm if you're really bearish. IWM, you can see, has already been giving you these bear signals and confirming with more downside price movement. It's broken that 170 longer term support line. So this is why looking at multiple averages, of course, IWM, this is the Russell 2000. So you're talking about the smaller cap universe comparatively. It's saying, you know what? Most people think, oh, the Qs have to break. But if the Qs have been acting better than, than that, the easier trade will be, if you're a bear, well, the easier trade is IWM on the downside. I'm not saying you should just rush out and buy puts. You can see it's kind of going back and forth. I'd like to see that red line staying kind of steadily red. But, you know, if you continue to see breaks under today's low and yesterday's low on a closing basis, then, yeah, you can open the door towards 160 as a next kind of big round number. I'm not making a predictions here. This is, you know, trade at your own risk. You know, don't come back to me and say if it worked or didn't, obviously, if I hope it works. But if it, if it doesn't, know that just, just be careful about whatever, however you're constructing these trades. The other way you can do these trades too, um, as you see, you can hover over that lower blue line there, Jeff, for me. And it'll tell you, that, yeah, there you go. So it tells you mm -hmm. that that value right now is 167.57. It's around 167 and a half. It's obviously coming down a little bit, but the idea is that that's the retest level, right? It can still, you see, go back above that line, but that's a zone where if you were looking to kind of set your risk reward a little bit tighter, you can say, okay, if it bounces up into that retest area, even if it goes a little bit above it, that's going to be kind of the next critical short-term high if you're a bear. And, and certainly if it retested back towards 169 to 170, that was the last major support breakage. But bottom line is that that first test usually back above that band will oftentimes be the short-term high that should hold in a future close. So instead of chasing on the downside, say I'm bearish on IWM, I am, uh, and then say, but I'm waiting for the next bounce as a good low risk re-entry point for a bear trade. That's how you can start to kind of kind of be aware of these setups and these levels while not necessarily just kind of just chasing blindly. Um, in general, Price, how long would you say uh, an average trade lasts for you? It depends on your time frame, right? So it's a good question, Jeff. You know, on a daily chart, I expect that we can certainly see a potentially like a two to four week move is very normal on a daily chart. We would call that more of a position trade. As I was saying for if you, I don't know if you want to pop up like a, a 60 minute chart, just to sure. show, show how the time frames change and then the holding periods would change here. But you see how like now you look at an hourly chart and you're, I'm saying, okay, it could be a week. But in some of these, you see, it might be more like a couple of days, right? Of just the sweet spot of the speed of movement. So, so if you're looking, go back and pop up TLT on this hourly chart, if you don't mind. Um, and I don't basically, mind at all. Say, thank you. That you look at like, T yeah, there you go. So you say, okay, you know, when you see some of these like speed of movement phases back in September, those trades were lasting a little bit longer than say those brief little phases in October, right? So you see, those were kind of getting that speed of movement, and then and then. They were just, and then they were pausing. But, you know, you see, most of what I'm looking for are not day trades. I'm looking for that kind of continue of evolution. As I said before, institutions can't get in and out of their whole position in a day. It's going to evolve typically. And so the idea is that you're looking to kind of be participating in that evolution and hopefully catch it early enough, like back September 21st on the gap down or like you know, the 25th, 6th and 7th, you know, those kind of phases where you catch that speed of movement, you catch several points where you can quickly, even the October phase there, um, October 17th through the 20th, you had a little bit of that. Right now, would you be messing with bonds? No, it's basically stuck in between the bands. It's a, it's a channel trade. It's stuck in kind of like who knows which way it's going to go next. So a lot of people might say, oh, well, that looks like resistance to that upper blue line. But that's more of a trading range mentality. That's not the big trends philosophy. The big trends philosophy is catch when the institutions are, it's, it's, it's like somebody yelling something in a crowded theater that panics everybody, right? And you say, okay, well, you know, it's like they start bailing. They're going to really be all rushing out and have a very tight squeeze door. And there's going to be a lot of people that get trampled, right? But if you're on the right side of that, you're out early and you're participating from the 
probably not the best analogy here, but but the idea is participating from that continued institutional flood out on the downside. That's where you can really get paid on your bear trades. Same way on the bull trades when it really starts pouring on the gas to the upside. Cool. Thank you, Bryce. Oh, sure. Thank I think you. that's the end of the questions, actually. Is All right. There's a couple you. questions that I'll answer because they have to do with this or recording or how do you get this? <laughs> so I'll, I'll cover those. Thank you so uh, but much. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. I appreciate it. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, cool. Uh, in terms of the recording, uh, Satish says, I'm having internet issues. Uh, is there, it's spotty right now. Uh, is there something that we can get access to the recording? Within about an hour of when we actually stop the recording, GoToWebinar is going to send you a YouTube link. If you're on YouTube, you can just back up to the beginning. Uh, no problem. But um, uh, there is a YouTube link you can go to. Uh, actually, as soon as we get done, but we'll email it to you in about an hour here, uh, just because that's when it sends it out. Um, you're welcome to go there. It'll have the recording for you. So uh, DJ wanted to know, is this indicator at the bottom available to Big Trends members? So this is uh, the indicator that we're talking about is part of the Big Trend Toolkit, and it is part of the Big Trend Score. And um, so uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about kind of the pricing on that. Uh, we have a really, really good offer. Uh, to try it out, because I, I think if you're going to try it, you're really going to like it. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, finding opportunities, because I think that's one of the things that we do in a super good way, or in a really good way. So let me just go ahead and kind of do this. And let me turn on actually the camera and my lights, and we'll go back to the video. And oh, <laughs> hold on. Let me just go ahead and show you uh, one of the things Price talked about in his demo. What, or when he was kind of talking about the markets and kind of like what he likes to look for is uh, finding opportunities and running scans and the scans that he ran in Metastock. And I want to show you how easy that is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on what we call our power console. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the scanner. Uh, so we've got charting. I run the scanner probably once or twice a day, every single day. Um, and you certainly Probably if I if I didn't work all day as well, I'd run it a little bit more. But if I wanted to, one of the uh, one of the methodologies that Price was talking about was finding stocks that were 100% over the moving average. And let me kind of just show you the BTTK scans. And as we talk about the Big Trend Toolkit, we're now on a third version. It's been a very very top popular toolkit, and uh, that's why there's three different versions of it. But if I look through here, uh, these are the different scans that are available. You've got your efficiency ratio. You've got your uh, big trend band setups, uh, your score, your score setup, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But for example, if I wanted to find that percentage above the 200 day right here, there's a percentage above the 200 day moving average and a percentage above the 400 day moving average. I can just run those scans. And if I want to find stocks that are entering orbit, uh, as Price says, and I love the way he kind of talks about it as, uh, you know, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to get something 100% above its moving average. And that's really something that people then start to pay attention to. And it doesn't take quite as much energy to move that stock anymore. And it's kind of that uh, that view of finding the big trends, but this is how you do it. You come in here and you say, I want to find any stocks that are above the 200 or the 400 day moving average. That's really all you have to do. Now, I'm probably not going to, I guess, I guarantee I'm not going to find any if I just run against the industrials or generally, typically what I'd want to do is open it up to maybe like all of the optionables. And to do that, let me go ahead and turn off like the normal scans that I run. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here to North America and I'm going to come in. And if I just want all the optionable stocks right here, I can just select all 5,832 of those optionable stocks. If I wanted to find the score setups, or the score triggers, um, either one, I could also select those. So right now I actually have about, well, I have about six selected, but that's because I did an Elliott Waves presentation <laughs> earlier today. But if I wanted to go through all of the optionable stocks and look for anything that had uh, was 100% above the 200-day moving average or above the 400-day moving average or had a big trend setup or a big trend trigger, this is exactly how I'd set it up. And that's all I really have to do. I'm actually going to go real quickly here and I'm going to unselect those uh, Elliott Wave scans that I had earlier set here. And we'll go back to the BTT3. And um, uh, we'll just do the setup and trigger real quick. And I'll uh, just hit the start scan. It's going to run 4,500 instruments. 
and uh, it'll come back with a list of anything that has that trigger or that setup. Now to run this against 5,800 uh, instruments, you notice that we're about 130, 150 in. It's rejecting about 90% of the stocks. Um, it's gonna go faster, uh, generally depending on your internet connection, depending on if you're sharing your screen and your video and all that kind of stuff. But this is a very, very efficient way for me to kind of do what Price likes to talk about, and that's ignore the noise that's in the market, focus on the ones that have the opportunity. So when I get a list back, I can kind of take a look at it, see which ones that I like. But I just love scanning in Metastock. It is one of the my favorite things. I love I scan every day, like I said. So that's how that works. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. I want to talk particularly about the big trend score because this is part of three. We didn't include it as part of two. It was an idea that Price had, and I absolutely loved it. So I think when we were working on the, the new version of the big trend toolkit, uh, Price wanted to kind of figure out a way to combine his indicators, the ones that he really likes to get a scoring methodology on it. And so he talked a lot about kind of the Williams percentile, the neutral. This score here at the top is actually the combination of that score every day. So um, you can kind of see it, but this is basically just telling us what's going on on the chart. It's giving us a score. And then when the kind of the conditions are met, it'll set up. And then when that, that low is penetrated, if it's a short, it'll give you a trigger, but all of it's very, very much automated. I like the concept of the score method that I took it and we made a, <laughs> I added a score to all of the other methods. So if you're looking at the big trends, uh, any of the other individual methods, it'll actually give you that score. So it's a really, really cool uh, program. Let me go ahead and kind of just kind of walk through what's included with this. Obviously the fact that we've done, we've been working on it for, and adding stuff. And I'd say that this is kind of the most complete version of the toolkit. Uh, but as in terms of methodology, here's a complete list. We've only highlighted a few of them. Uh, Price talked a lot about acceleration. And, um, uh, he showed the big trend score. He talked about the efficiency of movement. I'm going to get out of um, uh, the office today right about rush hour. I'm not going to move very efficiently home. Um, and you want to avoid that, right? So uh, he's, he, uh, here's the methods that are actually included, though. Um, and so all of those are testable, they're uh, scannable. Uh, they all have expert advisors and they'll have the score. And um, on all, um, this is a, uh, includes 17 different experts, 17 scans, 17 system tests, and 18 custom indicators that we kind of put together for the toolkit. And normally the, the Big Trend Toolkit 3.0 it's a subscription, and I think actually it's underpriced. It's fifty dollars a month, forty-nine to be precise. Uh, we are going to do a special with this. If you want to try it out, we're going to give you three months for the price of that one month. You only pay forty-nine dollars. If you haven't heard of Metastock before, like you're just jumping on the YouTube, you haven't heard about it. I'm going to give a little spill for Metastock. Metastock's been rated number one in its price category for thirty years straight. Every single year, the readers of Stocks and Commodities Magazine vote Metastock as the number one software program. And uh, so if you haven't tried Metastock before and you want to do the Big Trend Toolkit, what we'll also do for you is we'll also give you that extended trial on Metastock. So the pricing on Metastock, just to kind of give you an idea, if you do an end of day version, it'll cost you about $69 for Metastock uh, plus the $49 uh, and you'll get three months for that. Uh, for real time, you'll do uh, uh, the real time pricing uh, for the Metastock RT uh, would start at about $210 uh, to about $265, depending on what you want. So you can do that if you give us a call. It's 800-882-3040. You can visit us online at metastock.com slash sales chat. If you have questions or you want to get some more information, you can also visit metastock.com slash big trends A to actually sign up for that. So um, with this Big Ten Toolkit, uh, just, uh, I mean, anytime we're on a version three of an add-on, you know that it's something that we really like um, because we're three and it's been really, really well received because there's three iterations of it now. Uh, and the third one, I really like what we added, the scoring, the ability to get that all put together. So go to metastock.com slash big trends A, give it a go. You can give us a call. I'd love to talk. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, actually, if you want to talk to me, that's fine. Just ask for me. But we'd love to talk to you. Our sales guys are available at 800-882-3040. So there you go. Uh, in, in terms of the indicator at the bottom, Lou, uh, Lou Al, that does include that. Or DJ, that does includes that. 
Uh, Ari Zukowski says, what indicators have the most accuracy in predicting price direction? Is there any proof of this? So I like that as a question, Z uh, Ark, because it depends on kind of like what you're following and the instruments that you're interested in and all of that kind of stuff. And actually one of the things that I will say as part of Metastock and as part of this toolkit, it does include the ability to do a system test. You can go in and say, oh, I'm trading Facebook and Twitter and Apple or maybe like, actually it's MetaNail. Uh, <laughs> we were Metastock first. Uh, actually we get some money, anyway. okay. And, but you can go in and define an in, uh, a list of stocks with Metastock and you can say, okay, out of these methodologies, out of all these big trend methodologies, which works best? Which ones have the biggest drawdowns? Which ones are the most efficient? And the, the software toolkit will allow you to, to be able to do that and to be able to understand, not just based on kind of like uh, when we ran a sample test like five, 10 years ago, or but on the markets you're interested in uh, during any market condition, you can kind of define what dates you want. It's all in there for you. So I love that question, Nari Zukowski. And um, uh, there you go. Uh, that's the best way to know. So, all right, 800-882-3040, uh, metastock.com slash big trends eight, if you're interested in it. I do wanna say thank you uh, to Price uh, for just his long-term friendship and partnership. I appreciate all, everything that he does for us. And um, it, try this out. There's a reason it's so been so successful, so well-liked and so well-loved. So 800-882-3040. For me, thanks for coming. If you're watching us on YouTube, like and subscribe. Uh, it helps a great deal. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. See you at the next one. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. Before you go, I have two quick things for you. One, thanks for joining us today. We love having you here at our webinars and viewing our videos. So what I'd like to invite you to do before you go is like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. The second thing is we have a great ebook on trading that you can get for free. If you go to metastock.com slash YouTube book, you can get a free copy of The Secrets of Successful Traders. It's a great book with lots of content from traders just like yourself who can teach you some of the secrets that they have learned. Thanks for taking a second with me and learning about those two things. Thanks for joining us and keep on trading.